Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem A2 from the 2023 IMO. So this is a short listed problem and I'll walk you through the process by which I obtain the solution, which means some of the stuff I'm going to talk about may not lead to a solution. So let's see. The question is, we have a function from R to R satisfying some sort of functional inequality and they're asking us to show that if this inequality is strict for some um, x, uh, x not and y not, then either f of x is always greater than or equal to zero or f of x is always less than or equal to zero. Okay, so the first thing is because the condition is or and it's difficult to prove or, it makes sense to assume that the, con the converse of this or the negation of this is true, which means assume that there is some value that is positive and some value that is negative and then see if we can lead to a contradiction. In other words, if we can show that in fact the equality holds for every x and y. So let's start with that. So let's assume that we have some values and I call these maybe f of u naught is negative and f of v naught is positive for some u naught and v naught inside r. So let's start with this assumption. And the first thing that I do for any functional inequality or functional equation is to plug in some values for x and y and see what happens. So the first and uh, probably the most natural thing to do would be to set x equals y and then see what happens. So if you set x equals y, we would get f of x plus y times f of 0 is greater than or equal to f of x squared minus f of x squared, which is 0. So what does that tell us? It tells us that f of x plus y times f of 0 is greater than or, e or equal to 0. Well, this quantity could be really anything, x plus y could be really anything, which means f of 0 and f of u naught have the same sign, and f of 0 and f of v naught also have the same sign. So when is that possible? Well, the only way this could be possible is that f of 0 is 0. So this is the first thing that I obtain. So f of 0 must be 0. So if f of 0 is not 0, then we are done. Okay, so the next thing is let's plug in, um, going back and looking at the inequality that we have x equal x plus y on this side, I'm going to plug in y equals negative x, so I get another f of 0 here. So set y equals negative x to see what we get. Now if we do that, we get f of 0 uh, uh, times f of x plus x is greater than or equal to f of x squared minus f of negative x squared. Well, I know that the left side is f of 0 times something and f of 0 is 0, so that means f of 0, which is 0, is greater than or equal to f of x squared minus f of negative x squared, and this is true for every x in R. Well, now I notice that I can swap x and negative x because I can replace this by f of negative x squared minus f of negative negative x squared. That's also less than or equal to 0. So what does this mean? It means 0 is greater than or equal to f of negative x squared minus f of x squared, which means f of x squared minus f of negative x squared must be greater than or equal to 0. Now, on one hand, I have f of x squared minus f of negative x squared is greater than or equal to 0. On the other hand, I have that it must be also, the same thing must be also less than or equal to 0. So that means I have, in fact, the equality here. So that tells us that f of x squared must be the same as f of negative x squared, which means I get that f of negative x must be plus or minus f of x. So that's the next thing that I got. But now, if I look back at the original inequality that they had, f of x plus y, f of x minus y is greater than or equal to f of x squared minus f of y squared, I thought let's just use the fact that f of negative x and f of x are either the same or negative of each other and see what happens. Well, we can swap x and y here and see what we get. If we swap x and y, we would get f of x plus y 
f of y minus x is greater than or equal to f of y squared minus f of x squared. Now, these two sides are in fact, the right side of both of these two, are in fact negative of each other. So what, that, what does that mean? It means if I add these two, I would get f of x plus y times f of x minus y plus f of y minus x is greater than or equal to zero. So this is the inequality that I get. Now, I notice that really x plus y and x minus y could be any value. So if you replace x by, let's say, u plus v over 2 and y by u minus v over 2, so really what it gives us is that for every u and v, I would get f of u, x plus y is u, and x minus y is v my plus f of negative v is greater than or equal to zero. Now, what does this tell us? Well, I know that there are some values of u that this makes makes this one zero, uh, sorry, positive. So if I replace this by f of, so if we go back, we had f of u zero was negative and f of v zero is positive. And this inequality holds for every u and v in R. So if I replace this by u zero, I get f of v plus f of negative v is greater than or equal to zero. Now notice that this quantity is negative, which means I would get f of v plus f of negative v is in fact uh, less than or equal to zero. Now if I replace u by v zero, I get something that is uh, positive here, and that multiplied by f of v plus f of negative v, this is greater than or equal to zero. But this quantity is positive, so the product is non-negative. That means f of v plus f of negative v is greater than or equal to zero. So what does that tell us? It means f of v plus f of negative v must be zero. And that gives us f of negative v is in fact negative f of v. Now this was obtained by kind of like looking at this and figuring out that there seems to be some relation between um, f of negative x and f of x. Now, okay, so what can I do after this? After this, I can go back and look at the inequality that, that I had. It seemed like I was able to obtain equality here. I was able to obtain here, you go back and look at this. I was able to obtain that this must be equal. Well, what does that mean? It means the previous inequalities that I had must have been equality. So how does that help us solve the problem? Well, let's write it down. We have f of x plus y, f of x minus y is greater than or equal to f of x squared minus f of y squared. Now, if we swap x and y, we get f of uh, y minus x is greater than or equal to f of y squared minus f of x squared. Now let's negate both sides. So this gives us f of x squared minus f of y squared. And on this side, we have f of x plus y. And I know that f of x minus y and, and f of y minus x are negative of each other. So this becomes f of x minus y. So take this star and take this double star and compare them. Well, one of them tells you f of x plus y times f of x minus y is greater than or equal to f of x squared minus f of y squared. The other one tells you f of x plus y times f of x minus y is less than or equal to f of x squared minus f of y squared. So these two tell us that in fact the equality must hold. So f of x plus y times f of x minus y must be equal to f of x squared minus f of y squared for every two real numbers, x and y. What does that mean? And this is exactly the contradiction that we needed, which means either f must be always non-negative or f must be always non-positive. And this brings me to the end of this video. So I will see you in the next video.